Another thing we'd like to show you on our website is a place where you can go to learn a little bit more about implementation measures. So at the top, you'll see training measures. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see another category called implementation measures. And these implementation measures are intended to support you as you are getting your plan in place. So you've gone from this entire year of building your plan, and now you're ready to put the plan in place. So in thinking about this, one of the things that we want to share with you is a little bit about treatment integrity. Treatment integrity is such an important concept. Um, and we want to make sure that it's, we collect information on whether or not this entire framework is being implemented. Your plan is being implemented as it was designed. So as part of our training model, we encourage schools to have all faculty and staff weigh in twice a year to say what pieces of that plan are taking place. What are you teaching? What are you reinforcing? And what are you monitoring? So to do that, we have these measures. And these are, there's a teacher self-report version that is completed twice a year. And it's completed by anybody that's actually providing instructional time to students. So twice a year, they, we have all the core elements of their CI3T framework. And they use a Likert type scale to indicate which pieces are happening. So there's a total score for that measure, as well as a section on what am I teaching? What am I reinforcing? What am I measuring? We also have a direct observation tool that represents a subset of those items. We encourage people to walk in, observe for a 30 minute uh, period of time, and indicate what they saw taking place in the classroom during that time. And at the end of that 30 minute window, have the person whom they were watching also felt the exact same measures so that I get the outside observer's view and I get the teacher's view. And those are used for a coaching perspective. We encourage these, uh, these information sources to not be evaluative, but instead to be supportive of ongoing formative feedback for teachers to build higher level of implementation. And without these data, it is really, really difficult to determine what's happening in a school. I can't say whether or not this entire model is working without information to knowing if, if it's happening. So on this website, you will find those tools, the teacher self-report form, You'll find the direct observation form, and you'll also find the versions of the social validity, which we encourage you to also assess at those same time points. So in fall and in spring, you are trying to find out what are people implementing and what do they think about the process at those pieces. And those two pieces together we want to use to inform plan revisions, not during the current year, but for future years ahead. And that's just an ongoing part of the continuous improvement feedback loop so that twice a year teachers and staff are all going to know that they have an opportunity to weigh in and that that information is used as formative feedback every single year. When I look at really highly successful schools, they have built in these feedback loops and kept them. So looking to see what do people think about it and how are they doing it and it happens again in fall and spring and then those data are used at the end of every academic year to make informed, data informed decisions about how to make plan changes for the next year. So you can think about the CI3T framework as basically um, a constitution for your school. So it's going to be put in place with an option to amend as new research comes into play and people's stakeholders views get weighed in. And we have a whole new section on low intensity strategies that you can use for teacher delivered strategies both at tier one and as tier two and tier three supports.